right. Well, uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Senator Mike Braun, Indiana's next governor. Senator Braun. What a pleasure to be here. Uh, the day has arrived. Uh, a lot of times when you orchestrate something like this, you want it to you know, work right. You got certain guidelines you got to follow, but uh, what a blessing to get here. Um, you know, when I think about the journey, uh, it's been really an interesting one. And I want to start in the most important place. Dear, you're going to have to stand up. This is my wife, Maureen. Yeah. It sounds uh, too kind of, I guess, easy to where you go to school with somebody in grade school. You don't associate that much, talk about it, uh, get to high school still the same way. And we didn't start dating until, what, the second half of our senior year? And I asked her after we got married, did anyone tell you, dear, that you were lucky? And remember? He said maybe a few. So I've, I've been blessed that uh, my partner, uh, we only lived away for a couple years. And I think next to uh, getting married, the biggest decision we ever made was moving back to our hometown. What a blessing. And when a uh, few of your kids actually are interested in working in your own business, that's unusual in this day and age. So my two sons, uh, before they stand up, here's how I got them started. My older son early on uh, wanted a few things. And I said, well, that sounds like you're needing an allowance. I said, well, I'm going to do something in lieu of an allowance. I said, I'm going to help you start your own business. So uh, we live on a farm. And uh, Jason, who uh, was enterprising, uh, started a firewood business. I helped him do it. It was a lot of fun. And then the tricky navigation is to bring the younger brother in as a business partner. J&J &J Firewood Services, and uh, that was an interesting story because when you're three old, years older than your younger brother, sometimes that's an interesting dynamic. But Jason and his wife, Kristen, would you guys stand up? And my son, uh, Jeff. So I'm here today, uh, it took careful consideration what to do because I truly believe that Indiana's best days are ahead of us. And when you look at it, when you are a great place, you're a state that does so many things correct, does that mean you can get a little better at it? I've been a believer that there's always room for improvement. I got a great team here that's helped me along the way. And like most things in life, it's never easy. It's a fork in the road. And uh, so I made the decision, as hard as I worked to get here, that's the hardest thing I ever did, coming out of nowhere, and you want to become a U.S. Senator. It begged the question, well, why wouldn't you run a second term? I've never viewed taking the easiest pathway as the most important. I think that by coming back home, I'm going to robustly finish out two years as a senator, that there are measurable things we can get done. You know, I built the American dream in my own hometown. Over those 38 years from a little business that only had 17 employees for 17 years. Then we moved into Jasper, finally get a warehouse, get things like a loading dock. Um, it was hard scrabble. That is the way things normally play out. Now that business, that my office was in a used mobile home, literally, for those first 17 years. Has hundreds of employees, over a 1,000, across the country. And to have uh, two sons that want to come into your business, that's a blessing. And their little sister and a great young uh, you know, executive team that carries the ball there. I ran for the US Senate because I don't think leaders in DC are going to be the ones that solve our problems. I mean, the founders never intended it to be a system of seniority. They wanted merit. They wanted things done. They set the stage. Washington and Jefferson hurried back to Mount Vernon in Monticello 
because they wanted to get back to their business. That's what this country is based upon. You cannot solve the issues of today with career politicians out east. That was the main reason I decided to come back. And Indiana should be a national leader for freedom, opportunity, and prosperity. Should be a beacon for that. And I think Hoosiers are ready for bold leadership to do that. I'm a Main Street businessman that became a politician. We need more of that dynamic, and that's the reason I'm running for governor. Let me talk about a few things that we need to focus on here. High cost of health care. This would be for another discussion. I took it on 15 years ago. Jeff was in that meeting when we were not going to accept you're lucky. It's going up only 5 to 10 percent this year. And year after year, that's what I heard. When it got to the point where I wanted something else, we took the bull by the horns. We were large enough to self-insure. I got my employees involved in their own well-being, and we fixed it. Haven't had a premium increase in now nearly 15 years, and I got a healthier set of employees that has bought into their own well-being along the way. You're going to need a leader that is willing to take on something like that. We were just talking about it a moment ago. I love challenges, not for the sake of them, but when you know you can get something definitively done. We've failed to address things like infant mortality in this state, maternal uh, mortality. And that's shameful for a state like ours, and that's going to be a tough subject. We need to talk more about it. Other issues like agriculture, affordable housing, and not to mention the other big issue, education. Education is 52% of our budget out of $17 billion a year. Post-secondary is another 15%, and we got to do better at that. That's a lot of resources. And talking to many folks here today, they're going to be helpful on how we do better at that. So when you look at the issues that I think are important to most Americans, most Hoosiers, I'm going to weigh in on them. And I'm going to do it in a way that is entrepreneurial and going to maybe push the envelope a little bit and make sure that we keep the budget balance and we live within our means and keep that great context of doing business that we've got in this state. Workforce, workforce, workforce. Heard more about that pre-COVID than any other issue. It's even worse now post-COVID. I don't know where the current work ethic is. I don't know how we're going to get kids trained in high school where they walk away from high school minimally with skills that benefit you regardless of whether you're going to go into the workforce, the military, or seek higher education of some sort. These are all big issues, and I'm going to tackle them. Um, and I do think that if we're going to really fix them, we're going to have to be in a place where we do it, where the rubber meets the road, and that's back home in our states. You can't take it for granted that states that are solid are going to be able to do well. You're going to probably have to come back and even poke the bear, push the envelope to get states that are mostly on the right track like Indiana and make sure that you're doing things different than just relying on the federal government. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to take that experience that I've built over a long period of time. I'm going to engage all of you to help me uh, understand what the issues are. And I'm going to try to make for Indiana what I've been lucky enough to do for my own family and through my business. And that's a place where you can embrace opportunity fully, where you're going to have freedom acknowledged, and where you're going to get the basics done so that you want to come back to our state, raise a family, build a business, and make sure that you're really taking care of things where you can have the most impact. Before I finish, I want to mention one other thing. 
public safety, law enforcement. That is something where across the board, you look across the country, we have to do better at that. And if we don't, we're not going to get people to come into that pursuit. One of the hardest occupations God ever created is for those people that have to hit the street, put themselves between somebody that's breaking the law and their own safety. Uh, I intend to make sure that we get beyond having the poorest pay in the Midwest when it comes to state troopers. You look at Kentucky, you look at Michigan, you look at Ohio. They all do a better job than us. So I'm going to do the things that are easy, like making sure that the budgets are balanced and that we keep a good business climate. Those before me have set the stage on that. I'm going to tackle the tough issues that you're going to need somebody that's willing to stick their neck out, take a little risk. If you don't do that, you're in that broad band of mediocrity. And I want all of you to be along in the effort. And by the turnout today, I can see that we're going to be successful. And thank you so much for being here. Much appreciated.